What is up guys, Karma Medic here, and welcome back to another dose. I posted on my Instagram this video over here. Hey guys, I feel like it's been a minute since we've done this sort of life update or one of my Q&A videos. So if you want, you can ask me a question, anything about anything up over here, and I'll do my best to answer it in a future video. And so yeah, obviously, feel free to follow me on Instagram so you can take part in these question things in the future and other things that I ask you about over there. And without further ado, let's get right into it. So where am I now? Where have I been? Well, I'm currently back in my flat here in London. I just came back from a snowboarding holiday or vacation with two of my very close friends from high school. Let's play a clip of that right now. Have a good day. So that was an absolutely amazing time. I really got to unwind and relax. And now I'm slowly starting to get back into things here in the UK before starting my elective placement in emergency medicine at a big hospital here in London in just over a week's time. All right, so that is the end of my morning in ED. So the first question is from Yasin Oud. Really? I hope I'm pronouncing that right. Do you have some days where you don't plan anything and just let things go? The truth is, historically, not really. I generally have a plan for everything that I'm gonna do in my day, even on days where I plan to take them off and not do any studying or any work. I'll still have a general rough idea schedule of what it is that I want to get done, by when, how long it's gonna take me, etc. But this is something that I've recently been trying to work on. I'm trying to be more sort of free floating and chilled and relaxed about how I spend my time and how I think about my time because I want to be a more relaxed person. I don't necessarily want to be on the dot trying to work towards things and be as efficient as possible and as fast as possible. I'm trying to slowly, slowly move away from that so I can live a sort of healthier and happier life. Got a question from Hala Khalifi or Khal life. Um, have you ever filmed a video and never ended up posting it on YouTube? Yes, plenty of videos I've filmed, started filming, edited completely, and they've just never seen the light of day here on YouTube. I've actually got a collection of those videos which never made it to YouTube. I'll link it somewhere up over here. You can check it out if you want. Let me get some coffee in real quick. 
Next question comes from Tarlan SD, and he asks, how do you manage to keep your attention level same during four hour study block? It's super human. The truth is, I don't think my focus level or my attention level is the same throughout the whole four hour study block. It definitely goes up and goes down, and especially towards the end when I'm really hungry and I need to break for lunch or dinner, my attention starts to go down. But I think one of the important things that I do is that I try to mitigate all the factors that might cause me to feel that way. So I'll have my coffee, I'll have something to drink, I'll have my snack, something to eat. And you know, every hour on the hour, I'll get up, go to the kitchen, go to the bathroom or whatever. And that sort of serves as like a bit of a mental break for me. And also I'm just really motivated by this fact that if I can work for four hours, then you know, I can have a nice two hour break, I can go chill, I can play video games, I can call my friends and if I, you know, do enough studying in the day, then I can have so much fun later on. I can go be free and not be guilty or worry about how much I've studied. And so focusing really hard when I'm sitting down to study gives me the ability to be so free and happy and whatever when I'm not studying. And so I'm motivated by that fact as well. I need to work hard now because I've promised myself that I'm going to, and then that way I can be free later on. All right, so the next question is from Kopek Ki Zaki. Kira, and she asks, how was your holiday? Did you rest enough? How are you feeling about getting back to the real world? So the holiday was amazing. Um, hopefully you enjoyed that little clip that I edited on the train and plane back here to the UK. As far as getting back to the real world, honestly, I'm, I'm scared. I'm a bit dreading it. I have some anxiety towards going back to the hospital after not being there for almost two months. I have this like dreaded feeling that I'm gonna get to the hospital and my consultant's gonna ask me to do something and I'm just gonna freeze and not know what to do or they're gonna ask me a question and I won't know how to answer it. And you know, I feel like that's, pretty valid. I don't think I'm invalid for having those uh, thoughts and feelings, but the truth is I think even after the first day, once you just get back into the swing of things, you move on, you start doing it and everything is okay. So that's what that's at least what I'm telling myself, I'm trying to stay calm and trying to stay ready for these upcoming clinical placements. All right, so we're in the kitchen. I guess you guys haven't seen the kitchen in quite some time. So welcome back. Jess Dam 8 asks, what are your plans after you become a doctor? My plans after I become a doctor are to be a doctor. I mean, this is this is what I've been working towards my whole life. This is this is what I want to do. And so I don't have any other plans besides practicing medicine and hopefully becoming a good doctor. All right, so question from Mayan Kamapatra. Sorry if I completely butchered that. She or he asks, how has medical science taught you to be a better self? Love your videos. Thank you very much. Um, I'm assuming you're asking how has medical science taught me to be a better person? I had a little think about this before I answered this question. And I think that speaking to patients in a hospital has really made me very conscious of how important the different words that you use are when talking to someone. We have a big focus in medicine about how you say things to patients, how you deliver information and the types of words that you use. You do that because you wanna make sure that the patient feels comfortable, you wanna make sure they understand what you're saying and that they can digest and understand the information as well. And I think that's also been applied to my real life and how I approach people and conversations, especially people who I don't know yet or I haven't met. It makes me think twice about how I talk to them and what it is that I say. So. Rosan 2008 KRR says, how are you managing your studies, YouTube, fitness, etc. And I've talked about this quite a few times before, but the way that I manage all these things is that I think of them as non-negotiables in my life. So these are things that I have to do no matter what. When you put them in that perspective, you have to find time for them and you have to schedule in time for them and you have to force yourself to do them. When I make a decision to go to the gym, like I am right after I film this video, I don't think to myself, do I feel like going to the gym or not? I just know that I have to go to the gym because I told myself I was going to go every other day and today is every other day. And then same thing with YouTube and with studying. I've told my Myself, I'm gonna upload a video every single week at 8.30 a.m. on a Thursday. And so every single week at 8.30 a.m. on a Thursday, a video goes live. And same thing with studying. When I have exams, I don't think about whether I want to study or not. I have an exam and I have to do well, which means I have to study. I don't really think about whether I want to do it or not. It just has to happen. All right, guys. Now, you might have noticed that this channel is at 900 and something thousand subscribers which you also might've noticed is stupidly close to 1 million. And it's kind of my like dream or my big goal to graduate medical school and uh, have this channel reach a million subscribers kind of around the same time in June, July of this year. So if you're watching this video, you're probably a fan of me or the Karma Medic channel and you're interested in my life in some way, shape or form. So I think you'd be the ideal people to ask if, uh, if you know anyone else who might benefit from my videos, if you think other people might find these videos useful or valuable, please do share them. Please share them with your friends, with your family, with anyone who you think might uh, might find value in them. And I would appreciate that very much. And yeah, let's get to 1 million. Let's do it. We're almost there. Almost, almost there. Anyways, back to the questions. All right, so Vish Fish 101 
Nice profile picture, by the way. Asks, favorite pre-study routine to get into the zone? This is pretty much the same for me every single time I sit down to study. I grab like a full French press worth of coffee and something to snack on, apples, grapes, any kind of fruit, usually tangerines, something like that. And that's what I do. I get those things and once I have them and they're on my desk, I know that it's time for me to study and I just get it going. Shash the Pechetti asks, what lenses do you own at the moment? Let me show you. So these are the current lenses that I own. This is a Tamron 17 to 28 lens over here. And then down here, I have the Tamron uh, or the Sigma, I think. What is this? 24 to 70. And then hidden down here that gets almost no use at all is this 10 to 18 millimeter Sony lens that I got ages ago and haven't used very much since. This G Master F1.8 uh, 20 millimeter lens as well. And then the one that I'm using to film this with right now is probably my most used lens. This is a 15, which is what you see now, to 35 millimeter lens Sony G Master. It's Absolutely incredible. If I could only have one lens, this would be it. Adid Vamudit asks, does it feel scary to leave school forever? Yeah, it absolutely does. And um, I went into depth about this topic in a recent video that I uploaded. I'll link it somewhere up over here. But long story short, yeah, it does. The amount of responsibility that I'm about to have as a doctor feels like to me immeasurable. It feels huge. And you know, the decisions that I make on a day-to-day -day basis are gonna have really profound effects on people's lives. And so obviously I'm taking that very seriously and um, I wanna do the best that I can that comes along with a lot of pressure and so I'm trying to prepare as best as I can for when that time eventually comes. Leo CCU asks what type of field do you want to specialize in in medical school? I swear if I had a pound for every time someone asked me this question I would be very very rich. The honest truth is I don't know and it scares me that I don't know. On one hand I feel like maybe I should have figured this out by now and I should know exactly what specialty I'm going for and then on the other hand everyone tells me like don't worry you have time just start working see how you feel about different specialties and you'll figure it out as you go along. And that's kind of the path that I'm taking. I have certain specialties that I'm more interested in and less interested in, but nothing where I sort of feel a calling to, nothing that I'm sort of hardcore dedicated to. What I've always said that I wanted to do and what I've dreamed of doing since I was a kid was being a surgeon. And kind of as the years go by and I realize what the work-life balance of a surgeon looks like and how much it overpowers and overtakes your life and it becomes, your career becomes your life as a surgeon. It sort of pushes me further and further away, but it's not something that I've crossed off yet and I'm still considering it uh, quite strongly, but the, the real answer is, I'm not sure. Don't ask me what this angle is, because I don't know, I can't, I can't help you. <laughs> Kodik Kao Pippen asks, do you think your content will change when you finish university? Yeah, absolutely, it's definitely gonna change. Um, I'm gonna have no more med school vlogs. I can't take the camera and vlog my time whilst I'm in hospital. And you know, I'm gonna have to shift a lot more, I think, to explaining or describing what my day or my life is like, as opposed to showing it with a camera, because obviously you can't film in the hospital. But you know, there's all kinds of content to be made here on YouTube. The realm of possibilities is basically endless. And so I'm sure I'll figure something out. I'll find a new platform, a new format, to make content on that I still enjoy and that hopefully you guys enjoy as well. Anisha Kadir asks, why is being a person underrated in med school? I'm not entirely sure I understand the question, but I think what you mean is like being outside the norm or having your own personality and activities and things like that. I don't think it's underrated at all. I think it's such an important part of medical school, people being something else besides just medical students or just doctors. Having a life outside of your medical profession should be so normalized and should be so okay because medical professionals are just like any other people. They don't want to have just their entire life and all of their time dedicated to their one job. They're human beings too and they have passions and extracurriculars that they want to do and social lives to keep up and I think being a person in medical school is fantastic. You know everyone being their own individual and doing what they enjoy and to not be extremely cheesy but to like to shine and let their personality um, grow is something we should all be encouraging for sure. I don't think it's underrated. I think we should do it more. This is a really good question by Levin underscore RE31. They ask, have you ever been afraid of not reaching your goals? Absolutely. One of my like biggest fears in life, one of the things that causes me the most anxiety is this fear that I'm not gonna be able to live up to my full potential. The thought or the idea of me being able to do something bigger than myself, greater than myself, great, something like profound, important, whatever, and not doing that because I was lazy or I wanted to chill and have more fun is a really big fear of mine. And that's part of what drives me to keep working so hard and continue to do all the, these things that I'm doing because I really want to fulfill all the potential that I have. And if my potential isn't going to be something that big or that great, then that's fine. But at least I will have done everything that I can to try and reach that point. And so, yeah, it's definitely something that I think about every now and again. And it's what keeps me working hard. One of the things that keeps me working hard. Muhammad 
Abu Bakr asks, should I start a YouTube channel in 2022? Yeah, absolutely. I don't think it's ever too late to start a YouTube channel. And I think there's still so many niches to be filled and so many gaps in the YouTube space that haven't been a approached yet that haven't been done well and I think it's never too late and it's just one of those hobbies that a I personally think is really really fun and b you never know where it's going to lead you don't know what doors it's going to open for you and what will come out of just the fact that you're producing videos and posting them online and so you know my advice is always go for it start a YouTube channel see what happens and uh yeah don't look back Slayer Ka says do you play any video games uh, yeah, absolutely. I love playing video games. Uh, most recently, I was playing quite a bit of Call of Duty with Kenji. Shout out Kenji. And I've also been playing some Minecraft. I've tried to stream it a couple times, but <laughs> haven't managed to fix that just yet. So next time I stream, it'll hopefully work. And then other than that, like random games here and there, Last of Us 2, Uncharted, uh, Spyro, Crash Bash, etc. Uh, yeah, I absolutely love video games. I play them as often as I can. Jen Ryage asks, what is your proudest accomplishment? I think before I got into medical school, my proudest accomplishment was one when I got accepted into medical school. Easily the best feeling in my life, pretty sure. Um, I remember being just so over the moon. Um, I'll never forget being on this like big grassy area outside the library on the phone with my mom and we were both crying just extremely ecstatic that all this work had finally come to sort of fruition and I'd been accepted. And then during my time in medical school, I think my proudest accomplishment has to be this YouTube channel. In terms of sort of impact and value um, and satisfaction and how many people I've managed to reach all over the world has, has been incredible. It's, it's something that I could have never ever imagined and it just keeps getting crazier and crazier. Um, the numbers keep growing, people keep uh, subscribing and finding value in the videos and liking them and it's just, it's an amazing feeling. Uh, something I, I, I don't think I'll ever be able to replicate, honestly. Yeah, how, how am I, what am I gonna do next? Grow a, another YouTube channel to a million subscribers? Like, no, it's not gonna happen. This is this is a huge, huge accomplishment uh, and I'm, I'm really, really proud of it. My next biggest accomplishment is about to be becoming a doctor. I think once, once I become a doctor, that's going to be my biggest life accomplishment for sure. Something I've quite literally been working towards ever since I was in high school and working consistently on it every single year. Um, hasn't hasn't really stopped. So we're almost there. We're almost almost there. Woo! That was deep. Do you want to say hi? <laughs> Professional. Professional. <laughs> That's very cute. All right, we're back. Big shout out to my mum. Let's move on. Aaron asks, what country do you originally come from? I'm Jordanian Palestinian. I was born in Vancouver in Canada and I grew up in Greece for about 18 years. Then I went and studied my first degree in Toronto, the University of Toronto in Canada. And now I'm studying medicine in the UK. Solo Shot asks, how many push-ups can you do in one go? I will not judge. Um, I can do about 30 and then I gas out. Fra.cav asks, as a final year medical student, how many cups of coffee do you drink daily? I don't think it depends on what year of medical school I'm in. I've always been a fairly heavy coffee drinker because I just really, really like the taste. I love having something that I can constantly do this with. It keeps me occupied and keeps me like going throughout my long study sessions. I currently drink one coffee when I wake up in the morning, then I make a full French press, which is about four cups of coffee. Then I have a coffee in the afternoon after my lunch. And then I have either some more French press or another filter coffee. So maybe like six to eight cups a day, something like that, which I know a lot of people are gonna be like, oh my God, that's too much coffee. Stop drinking so much coffee. It's fine, all right? I've looked at the research and it's okay. If you really wanna see me drink a lot of coffee, you can watch my coffee video. I think it was like called coffee beans and something, a love story, or my 12 hour study with me. I drink a lot of coffee in both of those videos. Another question here from MBCHB underscore life is what is your top choice deanery? So this is referring to the physical or geographical location in which I'm going to be working as a doctor here in the UK. And all of my top choices are within London. So we have North London first and then South Thames second. And that's really where I want to be. I want to stay in central London where all the busy city life is, where all my friends are, my family, etc. I want to sort of stay in London. I've had a good experience 
here and I want to continue it on. Corey Sot asks how to overcome anxiety related to upcoming deadlines. Now, this is something that I've talked about quite a lot in the past. Generally speaking, I am of the philosophy that if I work as hard as I can, and I do as much studying as I can do before the exam or the deadline or the assignment or whatever, then I have nothing left to stress about. I've already done everything that's within my power and within my control to do as best as I can. If I end up not doing well on the test, then so be it. It's not, it's not my fault. It's not down to me. I can reassess what I did and try and improve next time, but I know that I did my best. And that helps me sort of reduce my anxieties and not worry or stress as much about upcoming assignments, exams, or deadlines. J A Moon asks, could you imagine to research instead of practicing in the future? So I think this is talking about doing clinical research or scientific research as opposed to practicing clinical medicine, let's say in a hospital. And the answer to that question is no. Absolutely not. I feel like I've done as much research as I want to basically in my whole life. I'm not really a big fan um, sitting down in the lab and you know, working with the pipettes or the mice or whatever it is that we do in the lab is just nowhere near as exciting for me as being in a hospital, talking to patients, you know, socially engaging with other healthcare professionals and other people. I really like that side of medicine, the hospital side of medicine. And so the only research I'll be doing from here on out is if I absolutely have to for publications, for my applications, for whatever, anything like that, but it won't be voluntary. So if I ever do research in the future, know that it's not just for fun. Before I get up from this place, can we just comment on the great cable management that's here? A couple of things have fallen down a bit, but generally speaking, I think it's pretty good. So Michael Matthew 96 asks, would you ever work part-time as a doctor and do other stuff? Um, I'm definitely not against working part-time in the future. I think, especially as sort of a young physician, I definitely need to get in the hours and get in the practice of working in the hospital full-time for many, many years to become good at what I do. But at some point down the road, you know, in the future, maybe want to have a private practice or something like that. Absolutely, I'd love to work part-time. I think um, working part-time on things like this YouTube channel, for example, keeps keeps it fresh, keeps it exciting, and keeps it like occupying your time so you have something to look forward to outside of your primary job or role. And so I'm definitely not against it in the future, but we'll see what happens. That's, that's so far away, I can't really plan for it. Eddie underscore Villa Real 21. Are those both football teams? I'm about to out myself as a complete football noob, but he asks, how can you focus on being productive when you have so many things going on? I think the fact that I have so many things going on is kind of what allows me to be productive. The fact that I have a plan and a schedule and multiple things to juggle every day and do is kind of what forces me to make sure that I get each of those things done on time at the right time. It's funny because on those days where I feel like I don't have anything to do, like on some weekends or something like that, that's when I find myself being the most unproductive, being in like a productivity slump and not being able to get the little amount of work that I need to get done done. It's kind of paradoxical, but I feel like the more you have to do, the more energized you are, the more motivated you are, and the more likely you are to get things done. So I try to keep myself busy pretty much as often as possible, and it works quite well for me. Kushav.exe asks, what's your opinion on rote learning? Is it the future? And my opinion is that it's definitely not the future. Rote learning is not the way to go. It's something that I did for a large part of my academic life, and I've talked about in many videos how it's not a good use of time. You spend tons of time reading the same things over and over again, trying to shove them into your brain, but it's not a good way to do things. Active learning and active testing of yourself and recalling of information is a much, much better way to learn. N4 Avin asks, are you going to USA? So if you've been following this channel for a while, you'll know that I wrote the USMLE Step 1 exam, which allows me to practice medicine in uh, the United States as a doctor. That plan is kind of on hold for now. I've decided that I'm gonna spend at least one year, if not two, here in the UK doing the foundation program. And it's kind of looking more and more like I'm gonna stay here for longer, but I don't know yet. I'm still working that out and thinking through it. But for now, the plan to move to the US is on hold. Devanshi Aurora 2002 says, so what is next now that you gave the hardest exam? Well, I have another hardest exam <laughs> coming up, which are my whoops, which are my final year of medical school uh, OSCE exams or the practical exams. So this is where you have to go do examinations on patients, take histories from them, complete clinical procedures, do communication stations like breaking bad news, all kinds of things. And these exams are quite intense and difficult because they involve a lot of practical actions like talking and doing things. It's not so much reading and memorizing and then ticking boxes on an MCQ past paper or anything like that. So that's kind of the next big thing that I have that's coming up in March. But you know, um, I'll practice with Kenji and Georgina and I'm sure I'll be fine for that. So just gonna try and focus on what I have to do now, which is clinical placement next week. Get me asks, how do you feel about your medical life so far? Honestly, I feel pretty great. I don't think I would change very many things at all um, if I was to start medical school over again. I feel like I've had a really good balance of my social life and my academic life, and I've been very happy throughout touch wood. The one thing that I think I would change looking back is to study less in first and second year. I had just left the University of Toronto where studying every day and very intensely was very 
very core to making sure that you did well. Um, and that happens to be the case with the Canadian and the US systems of undergraduate degrees. Here in the UK, that's not really the case. You can have a much more chill time throughout the whole year and then study really hard towards the end and you can still be fine. And so looking back, I wish I had done less of that intense, aggressive studying earlier on in my first and second years and sort of saved that energy and motivation for my third, fourth and fifth years, which I really need right now. House Mata says, can you read in Arabic? Assalamu alaikum. Yes, I can read in Arabic. I can also speak in Arabic. Jake asks, when would you change your hairstyle? <laughs> I don't plan on changing my hairstyle for a while. I'm actually really happy with it. It's very easy to do. I just like wet my hair in the morning, comb it a little bit, put some product in there, and then it stays up for the rest of the day. And it's funny when I walk around London with a mask on, and people recognize me. I always ask them, how did you recognize me? Like I have my mask on, whatever. And they always say, it's your hair. Your hair, like it's unmistakable. I always know it's you because of your hair. It's like up in this wave thing. So I like it. I don't really want to change it. I haven't thought about changing it. So I guess it's here to stay. <sighs> Rami Mamoon asks, don't you get bored from your daily routine? I mean, is there changes you do to keep it up? I definitely feel like my life can become, not monotonous, but the routine can get quite intense uh, sometimes. And I think it's really important to keep changing things up and doing different things. And one of the best, best ways I've found to do that is besides keeping my days very varied, you know, going to the gym, seeing friends, going out, studying, playing video games, hanging out with people, whatever, is to have like big things to look forward to. So things like the vacation that I just took when I went snowboarding, you know, that's something that is like a huge big event. It's gonna be so much fun and that keeps me going and keeps me looking forward to the next thing and helps me get through what it is that I'm doing right now. Diego Fiamma asks, I'm curious about everything that came before med school at KCL, high school, etc. I haven't talked too, too much about this. I went to high school in Greece. I had an absolutely fantastic time. I really enjoyed high school. I loved the friends that I had there and we got up to all kinds of interesting things. And you know, after high school, I was in Canada and Toronto doing my undergraduate degree, which I talked about a decent amount on this channel. I didn't film as many things back then, or I did. I took a lot of pictures and a lot of random videos here and there, but nothing that I feel like is of substance that I could include in a video, but maybe I'll look through my iPhoto library one time and go back in time and, uh, see what I can see what I can dig up. Mel X Jane says, not a question, but your vids helped me get into one of the best med lab science schools in Toronto. Thank you. That's, uh, that's amazing. Well done. I'm really happy to hear that. That makes my heart super warm and fuzzy inside. Good job. Mohammed Imran asks, will you still make study related videos after you finish your final year as a medical student? Yeah, absolutely. I think so. Um, <laughs> part of being a doctor means you sign a contract, which says that you are going to be studying and taking exams forever. And so I'm sure I will be studying for those exams and I'll be happy to film them and vlog them and whatever. So yeah, I don't think the study content is going anywhere. Maria asks, how hard is it for you to study every single day? Maria and everyone else watching this video, I don't study every single day. I've tried to make this really clear <laughs> in a lot of my videos. I study a lot and I study very hard, but I don't always study every single day. It really depends on what part of the year I'm in, how, like what exams we have coming up, whether we're in exam season or if I'm in the hospital, etc. I live by the philosophy of doing a little bit of work every single day is better than, you know, cramming it all towards the end, but I definitely have plenty of days where I don't do any sort of medical school studying and plenty of days where I do tons of medical school studying. So it really depends on the time of the year and how much work we have ahead of us, how many assignments we have. But yeah, please don't think that all I do is sit in my room and study super hard all day long, every day. When I have to, I study very hard and that's what helps me do well in my exams and things like that. But I definitely have plenty of time off where I don't study as well. Ooh, this is a good question. Nicoletta asks, how do you make your to-do list? So I make my to-do list in the following way. Write down everything that I need to get done indiscriminately. And then next to everything, I write down the approximate amount of time it's gonna take me to complete that task. And I also write next to it how urgent that thing is. So one exclamation mark for low priority, two for a bit higher, and then three for this is an urgent or high priority task. And then I can order things based on urgency or priority. If they need to get done now, then they need to get done now. And that goes at the top of my to-do list. And I just put a number one next to it. And then also looking at how long things are gonna take me. If there are a couple of tasks that I can just bang out quickly, I tend to do those because then when I look at my to-do list, it's not as heavy and it doesn't stress me out as much. And so I just number them one, two, three, four, five, six at the beginning of my day. And then as I go on through the day, 
just take them off and feel good about taking them off and move on. Lawrence asks, how does it feel to be so close to this big step in your future life? It feels scary. I've kind of addressed this in previous questions, but yeah, it feels pretty scary. Um, I feel like the change is gonna be huge. I'm gonna lose so much of my free time. I'm gonna have this huge block of time that I have to be in the hospital for. I'm gonna have annual leave, much shorter holidays every year. I'm, I'm definitely excited for it though. I'm not like dreading it or super scared or anything like that. Like. I'm excited for it. it's going to be a good thing. I just need to embrace it and prepare for it and take it in stride as we go. This isn't a question, but I just remembered a lot of you asked me where I get these hoodies from that have this like skull thing over here. It's a brand called Suspicious Antwerp. I absolutely love the brand. Their clothes are so comfortable. If you're watching this, Suspicious Antwerp, sponsor me, reach out to me, tell your people to call my people and we'll figure something out. Nafisa Tahseen asks, where do you get time and motivation to make videos on YouTube? Honestly, I don't think I could be making these videos on YouTube, especially on a weekly basis if I didn't truly enjoy it and you know feel really motivated to do them every single week. I genuinely derive a lot of fun and value and entertainment and happiness and satisfaction from making these YouTube videos. When I sit down to film, when I'm scripting videos, when I'm editing, you know, these are all things that I really enjoy. It's a creative outlet for me. It's something that I think is fun. And the people who watch them, you guys, you leave me all kinds of lovely comments and you like my videos and you share them. And that's a sign to me that you're deriving some sort of value. And so that also pushes me to keep going and reminds me that these videos do have a uh, purpose, they have value to other people and that they're helping other people as well. Gerard asks, what are you most excited about life after med school? I'm most excited about not being a student anymore. I feel like I've been a student for the biggest chunk of my life. It'll have been nine years by the time that I graduate. And so I've been in this routine of studying exams, studying exams for pretty much as long as I can remember. Whilst all my friends have started their jobs, their careers, etc., And I'm very excited to make that change. I'm very excited to make that move. And then as much as I am anxious about the additional responsibilities and pressures that are going to come with me being a doctor in a hospital, that's also really exciting. You know, having these decisions to make and being the person responsible for a patient is going to be an incredible feeling. And I really can't wait. And I'm looking forward to it as much as I am anxious about the whole thing. My literatastic, literatastic life asks, will you ever get a pet? I would love a pet. I'll never forget when I was at the University of Toronto and I moved into a new flat all by myself. I think it was in my third year. I was so lonely because I was by myself that I bought a goldfish and I put that goldfish in the living room counter and I would talk to it every day. I would like <laughs> interact with it when I fed it. And it was like almost like not another friend, but you know what I mean? It was something to be animated and moving in the house. And I absolutely loved it. I would love a pet, a little lizard or a snake or something like that. Preferably a cat because they're actually cuddly and you can like pick them up and move them. I don't think I would ever touch a snake or I would touch a lizard, but snakes are kind of scary. Long story short, I would absolutely love a pet. I would love to get a cat because they take care of themselves. Dogs are cool, but they're a ton, ton of work and I'm not ready to have a baby right now in the form of a dog. So cat it is. Alexandra Donnell asks, what do you do when you feel unmotivated? I do feel unmotivated at times. And certainly I think in fifth year with just so much school, so many years of school behind me and all these exams that we still have to do and everything, I've definitely had times where I felt uh, quite unmotivated. And honestly, the best thing I do when I feel unmotivated is I just, I do something else. I don't study, I don't work. I go for a run, I play sports, I see my friends, I take some time off, I do something else, something different that sort of re-stimulates me and gets me excited again about life and also, when I spend some time away from studying or away from my productive activities doing one of those fun things, I won't say I miss the studying, but it feels like it's time to come back to studying now, you know, because I've done something else, I've enjoyed myself. Okay, cool, time to get back to work. So that's kind of what helps me overcome that slump. I've also got a bunch of videos talking about motivation and how to get out of a productivity slump and things like that. I'll leave them linked somewhere up over here. Simple but deep question, how are you doing? That is very deep. I'm gonna sit down for this one. So. How am I doing? It's a good question. I think I'm doing quite well now. A couple of months ago, I went through a really tough period, not gonna lie. For the first time in my life, I felt really unmotivated, really uninspired. I was finding it difficult to get out of bed, like all these really not great feelings um, that I'd never ever experienced before. And um, coincidentally, around the same amount of time, I had taken on a sponsorship from the company BetterHelp who offers therapy services. And so I started doing therapy to test out the product or the service in order to figure out if I wanted to promote it on my channel as part of a sponsored video. In doing those therapy sessions, I realized, wow, therapy is so great and so useful. And so I did it for about two months and it was an absolutely life-changing experience, like ha hand on heart. It really opened my eyes to a lot of things that I've been doing in my life and how I think about time and my life and everything. And it's it's been amazing. I could not more highly recommend it. And so 
After those two months of therapy, <laughs> I feel like um, I'm in a much better place. I'm a lot happier and things are going quite well. But um, it really snuck up on me that period of um, feeling down and uh, it, it was hard to see where it came from but I think I had just burnt out from medical school from studying from this YouTube channel from everything and so I'm happy that I was able to realize it and take action on it um, and thankfully I'm feeling a lot better now but all of this to say please do talk to someone if you're ever feeling down if um, you know if anything's going on if you want to talk to friends family and there's always therapy and counseling and things like that um, I'm here to say I did it it was incredible I really really uh, found it useful and um, I'm sure that you or other people might as well if it's needed anyways went on a bit of a tangent there but I'm doing well now thanks for asking Vicherka asks do you want to have kids yes absolutely um, I actually can't wait till I have kids. I've always said that if I was really financially stable and I felt like I could support myself and a family and I was happy in my career and my job, I'd have kids now, but I'm obviously not there yet. But yeah, I love the idea of having kids. I can't wait to have a child that I can play sports with and watch grow up and whatever. I feel like, and I hope, touch wood, that I'm gonna be a good dad. And I, yeah, I can't wait for it to happen, but obviously it needs to happen at the right time. It's way too early now. I'm not even thinking about it, so don't get excited. Um, but, but yeah, I, I love the idea of having kids and I definitely want to in the future. Uh, Jai Karan asks, thoughts on Don FM? Honestly, an incredible album. This is The Weeknd's new album, the second in his trilogy of this sort of new modern take on 80s pop music with After Hours and now Don FM, both unbelievably good albums. Give them a listen. I'll put pictures of them somewhere up over here. Fantastic. I've been playing that on repeat. BW asks, when are we hearing, hello guys, I'm Dr. Nasser. Soon. I think in June we graduate, something like that, June, July. So it won't be that long. Um, stay subscribed. <laughs> I'm sure there'll be a great video when that happens. Akshita Suresh asks, how do you deal with hate comments? That's a good question. The honest truth is that I get very, very, very few hate comments. Touch wood. Um, thankfully, really almost none. Maybe once a month or something, there'll be like a mean comment or something like that. How I deal with it is that, in my opinion, the videos that I'm putting out there um, are not harmful, they're not inflammatory, they're not trying to offend anyone. The entire point of the videos that I'm putting up is hopefully to help someone else or give someone value in some way, shape or form. And so when I click the upload button, I know this in my heart. I've scripted the video, I've talked to the camera and I've said those words out loud, I've edited the video and I've published it. And so throughout all of those stages, I'm asking myself, am I offending anyone? Could this content be harmful? Could anyone take what I'm saying the wrong way? And so there are all these checks and balances in my process such that when I get to the time when I hit publish, I know in my heart that my videos are not, are not doing anything bad. And so if someone is really upset at my video or something I said or something I did, I'll read it, I'll acknowledge it, I'll think about it. Um, but most of the time, I just come to the conclusion that this person might be in a different place in their life than me. They might not understand my intentions etc etc and so I don't it doesn't really bother me I don't think about it too much it's just part of uploading things online that people might have different opinions than you or not like what it is that you're doing and that's completely fair everyone's entitled to their own opinion and I respect that um, and so yeah I just kind of move on with my life and uh, touch wood again you guys are really lovely watching my videos you always leave me such nice comments so I don't have to worry about it too much uh, which blue bottle in your desk do you use this blue bottle over here, this is a Chili's water bottle. They're like super common. I feel like everyone has them. And the reason is probably because they're so great. Um, I really like them. They're like, they're sturdy. They don't leak. They keep things very hot or very cold. Um, yeah, highly recommend them. That's my water one. And then the orange one is for coffee. Ethan asks, why have you chosen to switch away from using a case on your phone? Very good question, Ethan. And the reason is my new case is Apple Care. Um, so I pay for Apple Care which is like an insurance policy for your phone. And if you drop it or you smash it or whatever, you can get it replaced or get it fixed at a very low cost. I think like 20 pounds or something like that. And the reason that I don't wear a case on my phone is because when my phone is caseless, it feels like it's from the future. Like this phone without a case feels incredible. It's like a slab of metal and glass and it has the hard edges and it's just amazing. The second I put a case on it, it feels like this bulky old like thing that I don't feel as happy to hold. And so that's why I don't have a case because it feels amazing to have a phone without a case. And if I smash it, which I'm very careful with my stuff and I don't tend to smash them, I can get it replaced. And then final question, we have Samuel King asking, do you still use your iPad frequently? Not as much, you know? I used to use my iPad every single day for about two years, maybe two and a half years. And then when I stopped taking notes, 
handwritten and I moved to past paper questions and just doing past paper questions a lot. I stopped using it as often. And now I only really use it during exam study time when I need like scrap paper, I just use my iPad instead. Or if I'm reviewing things like Sketchy Medical or um, my USMLE notes and things like that. It's also really great as a second screen when I go to the library, I can have my laptop and my iPad and I find that very helpful. So I don't use it as often right now, actually. Let me show you guys. It just kind of sits as a extra monitor on my desk right over there. Um, and so I use it as a second screen whenever I need to. Don't really use it that much, to be honest. Oof. And all right, guys, that is it. That is the end of this life update slash Q&A video. Thank you for sending in all these questions. I really enjoy reading them and answering them every single time. We're at 900,000 subscribers, almost at a million. We're almost, almost there. If you're watching this, please share the video, leave a like on it, comment, share my channel with other people who you think might find it helpful. It's like my big goal to graduate medical school and hit a million subscribers on this YouTube channel at around the same time. So I'm gonna try and make that happen. But regardless, thank you so much for watching. Thank you for sending in these questions. Follow me on Instagram, join my Patreon, The Karma Club. Follow me on TikTok, Twitter, all my other social medias, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace. Whoops, zoom out. I'm not a fan of my hair right now. What is happening, mate? Getting a haircut at five, so maybe I should have filmed this video after that, but it is what it is.